gentlemen, and welcome to Derby Headlines, episode 11, part number one, right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. You can follow myself at Rio Kyle Masters on Twitter, and you can follow my co host at Corporate Cappy as well. If you want to follow us on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP is where you can find us on there. If you want to listen to us on the go, iTunes, Stitcher Radio, and Spreaker is a where you can find us. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app that is available for all Android and Apple devices. It is free to download, free to make a profile, and you can chat with us when we are live on the air or listen to all previous episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR is where you can find us on there. And hit that subscribe button, that bell icon for all upload updates. You'll get 2K content, unboxings, and all video versions of the podcast, like I just said. And I'm your host of WB Headlines, the self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters. And guys, welcome to part number one, episode 11. Sorry I'm getting it out to you a day late. Um, just had a really busy weekend. I'm in a hockey tournament, and I got a lot of stuff to do at home, so... I'm scrambling around trying to get this out to you guys, so uh, it might look like we're just going to do two parts this weekend. Uh, I got this episode today, and I'm going to release part two probably tomorrow, which usually would probably be part three tomorrow, but we'll just do it to part two. It's all the news I got. It's probably more news. I might do an extra one on Monday. We'll see how I'm feeling on Monday, but uh, as of right now, uh, just two parts, and uh, we're going to just jump right into it, guys. Actually, before I jump into it, I got to do this every time. Um... Go check out WrestleRumble.com, guys. Seriously, you can go follow them on Twitter, at WrestleRumble. They do a fantastic pick em contest. I'm telling you, it, it, it's it's so good. And then uh, they're also doing a uh, they're doing one for the Fastlane uh, pay-per-view. So you want to go check that out. If you're watching the video version of the podcast, it's up on the screen for you. First place is any championship belt of your choice. The replica belt from Derby Shop. So any of them, any of your favorite or one you've been meaning to get. You could win if you win the Pick'em Contest. And you, they got the MVP points for the other prizes. You can list have listed there all the way up to 20th place. Um, if you want to learn more about their MVP system, go check out WrestleRumble.com. And, and the full explanation is on there. Uh, they are fantastic, guys. A really good group. And they are also sponsored by Pro Wrestling Tees. So go give them a follow as well. Um, as for uh, Tees, go check out Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand, guys. They are a fantastic clothing line www.collarandelbowbrand.com I heard their sweaters are very, very comfortable. And I have a promo code to use, or for you guys to use, uh, on behalf of at JumboRef123 on Twitter. Thank you for the promo code again. Use Jumbo on checkout and save 10% on your order. And lastly, but certainly not least, ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com, guys. They specialize in pro wrestling and MMA apparel with over 50,000 t-shirts, sweatshirts, costumes, DVDs, and pendants all in stock. And the best part of it all, it's free shipping to the U.S. and Canada. Yes, that's right. You heard it right. Free shipping. All you do is pay for the order itself, and then the shipping is on them. Uh, if you do want to pay for express shipping, they give you that option. And if you live in the rest of the world other than U.S. or Canada, you have to buy at least three items, and shipping is free. But I can vouch for them, ladies and gentlemen, that they their clothing is amazing. Like, their shirts are top of the line. They're comfortable. They're, they fit just like a Dare to Be Shop shirt. And you, you get everything but the little authentic patch. I mean, if you're not big on that, I suggest using this website, guys. Go check them out. Go at least have a look. Maybe there's something else on there. Maybe not a shirt. They, they have other stuff on there. Um, they have their own sort of uh, designs as well. So go check them out. ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com So, now that that's out of the way, let's get right into WWE Headlines. Episode 11, part number one, guys, with the big heading of the WWE planning a 50-man Royal Rumble and some big names to be added to this 50-man Royal Rumble. I have that uh, right here on this article here. So let me get this out to you guys. There are a new, there's a new WWE rumor that popped up in regards to a huge 50-man Royal Rumble match coming to the Middle East per WI Insider or PW Insider and other sources. The big match is expected to happen just weeks after the dust has settled from the epic WrestleMania 34. Well, we'll see if it's going to be epic uh, pay-per-view. Um, if this match takes place, it would make history as the largest Royal Rumble match to happen. In addition, it would uh, also make for a second Royal Rumble to take place this year. However, details are a bit scarce with regards to the superstar involvement stipulation and live coverage. As per, D- or as per T- or PW Insider sorry, <laughs> reported on Monday, the big match is expected to be a part of an ongoing deal with the WWE to hold live events in Saudi Arabia. 
Uh, WWE head honcho Triple H has said to have flown over to help put together a deal making the first big match the official for next month. Billed as the greatest Royal Rumble. It would feature 50 men competing in typical Royal Rumble fashion. The match is slated for April 27th at the King Abdullah Sports City, which is north of the city of Jeddah. Um, there were already two Royal Rumble matches back in January, including the annual men's Royal Rumble and the first ever women's edition of the Royal Rumble match. The King of Strong Style, Shinsuke Nakamura, won the men's, and the Empress of Tomorrow, Asuka, won the women's. As of this report, it is unknown who the winners will face at WrestleMania 34. I'm hoping it's AJ Styles, and I'm hoping Asuka faces Charlotte. I'm sure all you guys are hoping for that as well. Uh, speculation continues to suggest Nakamura versus Styles for the WWE Championship, but Styles has to defend his title this Sunday in a six-pack challenge, which I probably think he's going to win, hopefully. Asuka will challenge either the Raw Women's Champion Alexa Bliss... <laughs> or whoever is holding the SmackDown Women's title after Sunday's Fastlane. Um, if you're picking Ruby Riot, then I don't know what the hell is wrong with you. Um, as far as the big Royal Rumble match slated for Saudi Arabia goes, other than the date and location, nothing else has been revealed in terms of details. One would think that the biggest stars in the company would be featured in the match. However, it is unknown if it will feature top champions, NXT roster members, former WWE legends, or, an, or, or new signees. It's also unknown if there will be any special stipulation attached to the big Royal Rumble, as such as a title shot for the winner, for the winner or anything like that. There will be mentioned a number of top superstars in the press release for the event. The press release reads as follows. As a part of the historic event, fans will see WWE superstars John Cena, Triple H, Roman Reigns, AJ Styles, Braun Strowman, The New Day, Randy Orton, Bray Wyatt, and Shinsuke Nakamura, among others. So there's some big names there to promote. I'd, I'd say all those are credible big names for promoting this big 50-man Royal Rumble. Um, the normal field for Royal Rumble matches over the years has been 30 superstars, but there were there was a 40-man edition uh, that was held six years ago. In 2011, former WWE superstar Del Rio captured that Royal Rumble uh, that Royal Rumble after eliminating Santino Morella last. The same year, SmackDown Live went a step further with a 41-man battle royal with the title shot up for grabs. I do remember that. that was freaking chaos. Um, the 50-man Royal Rumble match will be the, or will set the record for the biggest ever. It will also mark the first time Royal Rumble match has been taken place outside of the United States since 18-man Royal Rumble match uh, was held in Os Osaka, Japan. Um, that particular match was in 1994 and saw The Undertaker win by eliminating Bing Bam, Big Bam Bigelow. Or Bam Bam Bigelow, sorry. I'm not sure why it said big. <laughs> um, anyways, the first ever Royal Rumble match was actually held in Ontario, Canada. And again, a lot of people do forget that. It was held uh, not even 40 minutes from where I live in Hamilton. Uh, but since then, the event was held in venues in the States ever since. The 50-man edition of the match could certainly be entertaining to watch. And if a major stipulation gets attached, it gives even more incentive for people to watch. WWE fans will be hoping that the mat that a match of this magnitude has some sort of live coverage on the WWE Network. A previous WWE House Show event held in North Carolina last year gathered plenty of attention due to it honoring WCW, but it was not shown live on the network for fans to enjoy. Now, let's get my take on it. Uh, it that's a massive Royal Rumble. Um, you look at what the 40-man one did. I think that match was like almost two hours long. This 50-man Royal Rumble, unless they have plans for people to get eliminated just like that, then at this point... Okay, I'm all right with it. I really do hope we get like a, a network exclusive, maybe just the match itself. Maybe you don't have to do the entire live event. I imagine they'll be doing other matches unless they're just doing the event of the Royal Rumble. I, I imagine this is going to be at a live event in Saudi Arabia, and that's going to be the main event. Um, they really haven't come out with much details uh, surrounding that. Um, as for stipulation, I hope there is a stipulation. I hope they're just not doing it and then the winner just gets cheered by the crowd. You know what I mean? I think they will probably add something. Maybe they get the number one contendership for whatever brand they come from or they get a future title shot. Maybe they get a maybe they get a future title shot or, you know what they should do? They probably do a stipulation where the winner of that Royal Rumble enters in at number 30 for the upcoming Royal Rumble. Maybe, maybe that's a good stipulation. That way you're not giving away number one contenderships or title shots to people that are in the current storyline at that point for that title. So, unless they have a plan for someone to do it. But uh, I think the winner should come in at number 30. Get the opportunity to come in at number 30 for the Royal Rumble coming up in January of 2019. That's my guess. What do you guys think out there? What do you think the uh, 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 a stipulation or what should the winner of this Royal Rumble do uh, 
winning this 50-man Royal Rumble, the big record-setting Royal Rumble match. And let me know what your opinion's out there. Do you like the 50-man Royal Rumble idea? Do you think it should be shown on the network? Or it should be just something, uh, WWE.com, they bring up on the next episode of Raw or SmackDown. So you guys let me know down in YouTube comments below or tweet at me at NoHoldsBarredWP. <laughs> this next article, it made me laugh because um, we already saw something from him recently that was pretty funny. And I can't believe he's already taken a step above that. Um, but Ric Flair to make feature film acting debut in an R-rated wrestling comedy. Oh, boy. <laughs> With nearly 50 years in pro wrestling business, Ric Flair has stepped out of the industry to endeavor in his first major acting role as first reported by The Rap. Flair, 69 years old, will be starring in the film Uncle Steamroller and Champion Rabbit. Wow, what a movie title. <laughs> Anyways, it was written by Brian Kolchuk, whoever that is. The film is currently in development with Kolchuk being the supervisor or supervising producer. Information released about the movie so far explains that it will set, be centered around a dejected Iraq war veteran who is struggling to regain his pro heavyweight wrestling championship while being managed by a failed motivational speaker. Oof, that's an ugly plot. <laughs> um, regarding Flair's role, he will play the president of the World Wrestling Union, which is a Las Vegas syndicate that owns the wrestling tour where Uncle Steamroller attempts to make his comeback. Flair shared the rap, or shared the rap, which is, I guess, his company that interviewed him, his excitement of being part of the film. This is, quote, Ric Flair. I really like this wonderfully written script and find it to be very entertaining. The edgy sense of humor is great. But the story also has a good heart. I'm expecting the inspirational storyline will appeal to fans that extend beyond my loyal core wrestling base. And I'm seriously looking forward to getting this film in front of the worldwide audiences. Woo! <laughs> I love how they add the woo in there in the quote. Um, Although Flair has been selling out crowds for over 40 years, the Nature Boy has remained in pro wrestling business and is one of the most popular com uh, competitors who did not build a bigger reputation outside of the industry via movies and television roles. As a result of completing a, as a pro wrestler, or competing as a pro wrestler and headlining events for decades, Flair has used his main event status and the woo catchphrase to transcend the wrestling business. If it is not Sergio Brown prepping his Colts teammates with his Ric Flair speech, it is Josh Reddick of the Houston Astros doing the woo impersonation as well as the Astros making it a rally cry. Uh, despite a major health scare, Flair looks to have been rebounding quite well as he continues to fulfill his legendary status in the entertainment business. Flair does not show any signs of slowing down and has ever and even been the centerpiece of a music song called Ric Flair Drip. Now, if you haven't seen this music video, <laughs> watch it. If you're into rap, you're going to love it. If you're not, I mean, it's going to suck, but it's, you got to just watch the video just because of Ric Flair. And the song is called Ric Flair Drip. <laughs> and it's hilarious. Ric Flair in the video is just... He looks in place. And sometimes he looks out of place. But I love it because it's Ric Flair. Um, so go check it out, guys. Uh, while his in-ring days are over. Officially retiring from the WWE back at WrestleMania 24. And a career-ending loss to Shawn Michaels. The only two-time WWE Hall of Famer is still styling and profiling. Kiss stealing, wheeling dealing, son of a gun. So good for Ric Flair. Interesting movie coming out. That's that. That sounds pretty good. A wrestling-based R-rated comedy. I think it's been a while since we had something like that. Um, I think the last wrestling movie I remember was the one with Mickey Rourke, uh, the wrestler, and it really wasn't a comedy, but it was actually not bad. I don't mind that movie. I had to rewatch it. Um, as for this movie, I really hope it does good. If Ric Flair is saying it's good and it's got a good heart, then maybe it'll be good. Maybe it'll be not good. We'll have to see. A lot of people have different opinions out there, so <laughs> I'm hoping Ric Flair has a pretty uh, edgy, funny role in it. I'm, I'm looking looking forward to it. Um, next bit of news for you indie guys out there, including myself. I'm a huge indie mark. You know who I am. <laughs> you know about me if you don't. Uh, Young Bucks teasing a WrestleMania appearance. Over the past several weeks, Raw Tag Team Champions Sheamus and Cesaro, also known as The Bar, have no, has shown their dominance in the tag team division with a... De Deficit of teams on the red brand, the bar has spent most of their time feuding with Titus Worldwide. Uh, although the Titus Worldwide defeated Sheamus and Cesaro on several occasions, they were not able to win when it counts the most as they were defeated at the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Titus and Apollo were also defeated in two straight falls in their two out, of three, two out of three falls match on Raw for the tag team titles. 
Most recently, Scott Dostin and Dash Wilder of The Revival attempted to earn a title shot at WrestleMania with intentions to defeat the bar on Raw, but also fell short. And that sucks because they kind of buried The Revival there. And I think a lot of people were hoping that they, The Revival would come out on top. Maybe it's still, maybe they still will. It's really unknown what's going to go on with The Bar. Um, prior to these teams, The Bar also feuded with Seth Rollins and Jason Jordan before Jason Jordan got injured. They reunited Shield team of Rollins and Ambrose before Ambrose got injured as well as a series of matches with the returning Hardy Boys following WrestleMania 33. Sheamus and Cesaro were, un- were able to defeat each of these teams and have shown that they are no- there's no team left to dethrone them. With a deficit of teams, an opportunity for other teams to either form or come from outside to be is created. Recently, Sheamus went to Twitter to reemphasize as the bar has no worthy opponents on the grandest stage of them all. And, and he issued an open invitation to former WWE Tag Team Champions. The Dudleys and Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder responded to the invitation, showing their interest. Currently, the Young Bucks are the Ring of Honor World uh, Six-Man Tag Team Champions that have not held the titles or have held the titles for approaching seven months now. While Nick and Matt Jackson competing against the bar at WrestleMania 34 would certainly be highly anticipated, um, the Young Bucks are currently under a two-year contract with the Ring of Honor that expires in December of this year. In addition to Young Bucks... Uh, in addition also to Cody Rhodes, are uh, spearheading and self-financing the all-in event scheduled for September 1st in Chicago, Illinois. So it is unlikely that the Young Bucks will be competing at WrestleMania 34 this year, even after the Twitter callouts. Now, I know they they tweeted out, it's not in this article, but they did tweet out to Sheamus and Cesaro uh, about that, but I highly doubt the Young Bucks will be there. It's really not in the cards for them to be there. I I doubt WWE will do like a one-off for them. To me... It'd be a cool nostalgia factor, but I really don't see it. So I really hope maybe the, the revival get a second chance. Or I'm hearing rumors that they're planning on doing a or taking two superstars that are not actually team putting together to face the bar. That screams pre-show. I really hope if there is a storyline behind it, they got to start it soon. If not, it's just going to be in the pre-show. So I'm hoping the bar have a better match. I'm hoping they get onto the main card. They have been doing good as Sheamus and Cesaro. I'll give them that. And uh, I really hope they don't bury the revival anymore. I'm hoping the revival end up. Maybe winning a number one contenders match against like Titus Worldwide, something like that. Next article: Former WWE World Champion claims he will return for Mania. So I did have an article about this a couple of weeks ago on Headlines, where I told you guys that uh, a certain superstar was retired, and, and there's reports saying that he is in ring career is done. And he's going to have a backstage role. Now, this superstar has come out and taken to Instagram or Twitter, wherever he tweeted it or Instagrammed it, and saying that he's not actually done. And he's coming to WrestleMania 34. So here's the news on that. WrestleMania 34 takes place on April 8th for the second time in five years. It will originate from the Mercedes-Benz Superdome in New Orleans. The promotion for the huge event is in full swing with the news that Ronda Rousey and Kurt Angle will team up to battle Stephanie McMahon and Triple H coming this week on Monday Night Raw. Add in the WWE Universal Championship match between Lesnar and Reigns and a chance at Undertaker and John Cena happening, there's a lot of former world champions coming to WrestleMania 34. Which former WWE champion has announced that they're coming back to WrestleMania? It looks at or it looks like there will be another former WWE world champion coming to WrestleMania 34, and this one is a surprise. Uh, in a new Facebook post, the Big Show posted a photo of himself in the gym looking completely serious, and the message says, I haven't gone anywhere yet. So this was in terms, like I said before, the reports were... And he must have read those reports that his entering career was done, but now he's taking to Twitter, and the guy's lost a shit ton of weight. Like, you, you got to admit that guy. Um, he's he's done his work in the gym. Guy used to be, like, almost 500 pounds, and he's cut down to almost 300. So he's almost lost, like, 200 pounds since he's been getting it back into shape. So it's good for him. But he, he tweeted out, I haven't gone anywhere. So he obviously read those reports. Now he's basically telling he's like, look, I'm not actually retired. Let's, let's calm down, everyone. <laughs> um this comes, this comes just one week after Big Show spoke with a website, UPI, about Ronda Rousey arriving in the WWE as well as his future in the WWE. Big Show has had hip surgery in October 2017, but he said he would definitely be back in time for WrestleMania 34. Uh, why is this a surprise for the universe? Uh, last year, the Big Show competed in the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. At the time, Big Show was supposed to wrestle Shaquille O'Neal, but the former NBA legend pulled out amidst controversy that included Big Show calling Shaq lazy and saying that he hasn't been taking this opportunity seriously. And I don't think he has. If you take a look at what Shaquille O'Neal looks like now, 
Uh, he's definitely gained a lot more weight as Big Show's losing the weight. So I really don't think he took it seriously and it was just a joke and it, it, it ended up t- being serious. And then Shaquille O'Neal obviously was like, okay, I wasn't actually serious, so I'm sorry. Um, at the time, Big Show said that he thought he was doing a Shaq a favor, doing a Shaq a favor by wrestling him at WrestleMania 33. When Big Show wrestled Floyd Mayweather at 24, the boxer picked up a $25 million paycheck for the appearance. Holy shit. So Floyd Mayweather for that shitty ass boxing match at 24 got paid $25 million. Holy shit, man. Shaq, man, you really blew that one. Um, Big Show also said that it, uh, this was exactly like his final WrestleMania. This is likely his final WrestleMania match as his contract expired early 2018 before WrestleMania 34. It looks like Big Show has worked out something new with the WWE. If Big Show is returning for WrestleMania 34, as he said in the interview, he either has a new contract or some other sort of deal worked out maybe for a one-off match. The best bet is that since Big Show has done nothing since his hip surgery to start an angle, he will appear in the Andre the Memorial Battle Royale. I can see that happening. I can for sure see. You know how like, they don't do everyone's entrance, but they do. They give the last couple of people their entrance. I can see Big Show being one of those in a big surprise. Like the Michael Cole going, he wasn't supposed to be here. You know, I thought he was retired. You know, some shit like that. Um, but I do see Big Show. Uh, definitely being in the Andre Giant more about Royal, it is what it is. At least he's not in the, in maybe not the main card, or maybe it is going to be on the main card, but I don't see him maybe winning it again. Maybe they make him a two-time, because right now I really don't care about the Andre the Giant more about Royal until they do something with it. Me and Cappy have said this endless times before, that if you do not put a stipulation on the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal, then why should we give a fuck? Why should we care about it? The, the winner just sits beside a trophy for weeks on end, and then you'll never see the goddamn trophy again. So why should I give a shit? Like, tell me why should I care about this thing? So they need to add a stipulation to it. I really hope they eventually do, or maybe this year with the rumors of the them boosting it up for that special they're doing on Andre the Giant. So we'll see what happens when it comes to that. But good for Big Show. If he's coming back, it is what it is. You guys know my opinion on Big Show. I hope he's not on TV regularly. I just hope maybe if this is coming off for one one off, then I'm fine with it. Um, next article, how long can we expect to see Ronda Rousey heading into WrestleMania? So how long can we expect to see her leading up to WrestleMania? This article was released before Raw this week, so it's going to sound a little off. Um, when Ronda Rousey signed her contract to join WWE, a lot of fans wondered if she would end up like Brock Lesnar, a part-time superstar who only showed up occasionally and then took extensive periods of time off. There was also questions about whether she would wrestle on television or just compete at pay-per-view events. If her schedule is any indication of what fans can expect from Rousey as she starts her new professional wrestling career in the WWE, they are in for a pleasant surprise. Ooh. PW Insider reported that Ronda is scheduled to appear on every single Monday Night Raw episode from now until WrestleMania 34. So we're going to see a lot of Ronda, and that's good. If she's going to be this big part of this division, she needs to be on Raw constantly. You got If, you, if you're going to come out and say she signed a full-time contract, keep her on that full-time line. After WrestleMania 34, I don't see her being a lot on television. Her probably next big angle will probably be around SummerSlam. Maybe she wrestles at one pay-per-view in between. It all is going to depend on what she looks like in her WrestleMania debut match. Maybe they're waiting and going to judge it off that. Um, So WrestleMania 34 takes place on April 8th, and there to be revealed that Ronda Rousey will be in the next four episodes of Raw leading up to it. This means that Ronda will appear on five straight episodes of there to be uh, since her her contract signing at Elimination Chamber. Those RWB appearance include Monday Night Raw in Milwaukee, which was this past Monday, uh, next week in Detroit, and the following week in Dallas and then in Cleveland, and finally in Atlanta on April 2nd, the week before WrestleMania. There are also rumors that the RWB will have Ronda Rousey work at least one non-televised house show event. The RWB will hold a house show at Madison Square Garden on March 16th, and they are considering adding Ronda Rousey to the show. This will be the first time the former USC champion has appeared in any event inside Madison Square Garden. Um... Ronda Rousey will compete at WrestleMania 34, and the original Derby rumors are coming true. She will wrestle in a mixed tag team match with Stephanie McMahon and Triple H. The question of her partner uh, was up in the air. It was either The Rock as the obvious choice. However, The Rock likely won't be com- competing on, on at WrestleMania 34 due to his Hollywood schedule. Instead, uh, as showed Monday Night Raw last week, it looks like Ronda Rousey will be teaming up with the uh, Olympic gold medalist Kurt Angle. It was Angle who started the problems between Ronda Rousey and Stephanie McMahon in the Elimination Chamber. And then on Monday Night Raw, Triple H sucker punched Angle before leaving the ring. So, 
We're seeing a lot of Ronda Rousey, which is really good. Like I said, if she's going to be a big part of this division, you got to keep her on TV more. After WrestleMania 34, I would do the same, but it all depends on what her contract states. And maybe I don't see her getting fatigue. I mean, when she was in UFC, they take a lot of time off between events, and I know she's training, but you know maybe they should conclude or keep her on TV more. Start another feud. You don't necessarily have to keep having matches, but you can start another feud that leads into these uh, these uh, dual branded pay per views now. So. We'll see what happens, but for sure now we're getting Ronda every Raw leading up to WrestleMania, which is pretty good. They're really giving this uh, mixed tight team match a good build, which I really would like to see out of that. So, yeah, it is what it is. Good for Ronda, and you guys let me know out there. Let me hear your, your thoughts of Ronda Rousey. Um, let's move on here. Rumored WrestleMania, or the rumored WrestleMania plans. Uh, I guess this is the last part of the news, actually. <laughs> I thought I had another one. Uh, but the rumored WrestleMania plans for Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. Uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn are involved in one of the highest profile storylines of the year with Shane McMahon. This included Owens headbutting Vince McMahon in an awesome moment and months of tension between have been teased. Over the past few weeks, we have also seen some tension between Owens and Zayn teasing a potential match between the two. So where is this all heading? Dave Meltzer in the latest Observer Root newsletter shares some disappointing news about the current plans for Owens and Zayn at WrestleMania 34. Meltzer says that as of right now, Owens and Zayn are actually planned for the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. And this is funny because Kevin Owens actually tweeted today a picture of the (laughs) Memorial Battle Royal and him taking notes or taking or studying footage. And I don't know if he's being a goon because of the rumors or or what I think he is to me. I think he's being a goon. He just read the report saying, oh, and I'm going to mess with people. Um, I would rather see a Zayn versus Owens match one-on-one. It needs to happen just like they did Jericho and Owens. It's got to happen um, unless they have like a moment briefly in the Andre Jordan Moore Battle Royal where they eliminate each other and they carry on this feud after WrestleMania. If not, then you have to have the one-on-one match at WrestleMania. Um, but that kind of sucks. We take it with a grain of salt. That is Dave Meltzer. You got you to take with everything what he says with a grain of salt. Uh, but it would certainly be disappointing, uh, though, if Derby doesn't go the the route of Owens and Zayn one on one. So you guys, let me know what you do with Owens and Zayn at WrestleMania. I'm sure most of you would say one on one, but let me know your thoughts on them going into the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Um, so let me down, let me know down in YouTube comments below, or tweet at me at No Holds Barred WP. So. As for that, that's it for the news today, guys. Please tune in to part number two that will be posted tomorrow some point. I'm not sure when, so bear with me tomorrow. Um, but thanks for tuning in to part one. I know it was a short episode today, but that was all the news I could gather up with me having a busy week and being in hockey tournaments. It's crazy. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Again, check out all the sponsors I said at the beginning of the show, Russell Rumble, Collar and Elbow, and ExtremeWrestlingShirts.com. But that is going to wrap it up for episode 11, part number one of their WWE Headlines. Right here on No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast, your Canadian wrestling podcast that talks about the WWE and No Holds Barred on anything we say, pun intended. You can follow the podcast again on Twitter at No Holds Barred WP. Follow myself at Real Kyle Masters and follow my host at Corporate Cappy. You can follow the podcast on Instagram, No Holds Barred WP. And then you can listen to us on the go on Stitcher Radio, iTunes, and Spreaker. Spreaker is a glorious podcast app. That's available for all Android and Apple devices. It's free to download and free to make a profile. And you can chat with us when we're live on the air and listen to all episodes of the podcast. If you want to watch any video versions of the podcast, youtube.com slash NHBWR. Hit that subscribe button, that little bell icon for all notification updates. we got 2K content, unboxings, and all video versions of other podcasts as well. I'm your host, self-proclaimed greatest host, Kyle Masters, as always, guys. And I will see you tomorrow for part number two.